Here's Paddy's latest offer. It's two up, you win. We'll pay out immediately if the team you back goes two goals up. Available in all Premier League and La Liga matches. Not available in shops. TNC Supply 18 plus. BeGumbleAware.org. Hi there, Bruce Millington, James Milton, Ian Wilkerson and Paddy Powers, Ed Quigley. Looking at three fabulous Premier League games on Sunday and then we've got a Monday night football as well. So there's loads happening this weekend. It really, really is good. And the Sunday... Uh, triple header kicks off at noon with Man United versus Swansea. Man United are going to be short. Just how short are they, Ed Quigley? Yeah, they're 4 to 11 currently, Bruce. Uh, the draw is 4 to 1, and Swansea are 15 to 2. Righty ho, James, lead us off. Um, yeah, obviously we're doing this before the the Manchester derby. Uh, well, I was I was quite negative about United, but I think this this game looks. Uh, uh, an excellent chance for them to, to take three points. I mean, Swansea's away form, we mentioned Burnley's away form being bad. Swansea's is nearly as bad, 13 defeats in 17. Um, I, th I think the, uh, the the way to approach this, you know, 4-11 to 11 United doesn't really float my boat, but maybe the the United-United the double result may not take uh, them too long to, to break through against a, a dodgy Swansea defence. And, and and Swansea have struggled against the uh, the stronger teams in the division. They've lost nine of eleven against the top six. Um, and, and yeah, I think this should be should be regulation for United. Okay, what price is the old uh, United United double result there, Ed? Uh, that's even money. Even money. That will do. You, will it, Milton? That will do. Yeah. Okay, Wilco. What about you? Well, James has mentioned Swansea's bad um, away record. They did win at Anfield, so um, that result came out of the blue. But I can't really see that we're having another one here. Um, and um, I've, they've got a couple of players who really need to be on a bit of Sigurdsson and Lorente, and I'm not sure whether they're going to get the space and be able to express themselves as much on there. And I don't know whether they'll go for it. It's a bit of a free hit for them, but I don't think What's they'll take it. it. They've got to. But um, United have obviously had a lot of draws at home, nine draws at home, and 12 of the last 14 games at Old Trafford have been unders. Wow. Good so, angle. 11 to 10. Good Under angle. two and a half. 12 of the last 14. Excellent. I love it when a stat comes out like that that backs up an opinion. And are you, so you're getting odds against something that's happened 12 of the last 14 league games. Yeah. That sounds good. Ed, what do you think will happen here? Yeah, this line will probably move a bit anyway, maybe not majorly on the back of tonight's result, unless it's a majorly shock result in his injuries and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's a quick turnaround for United, obviously, to play tonight and then play on Sunday. And then they've sent the Vigo on Thursday as well. And as we've mentioned at the top of the show already, like they have got a lot of injuries. Like, I don't know, look, back in United, these kind of prices, you know, you'd be... You'd be ringing up Wonga for a loan at this stage at home, like because um, they've drawn so many. As um, Wilco just said there, I personally wouldn't be touching it at four to eleven. I, I actually think Swansea might pick up a point here. I just I know there's nothing to back that up really on their historical form this season. It's just uh, I just I just you yeah, got again, feeling, the yeah? yeah, Swansea plus one for me at two to one. I think is a decent bet. Okay, two oh five, Everton, Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea obviously desperate. This is one of the harder ones, isn't one of the harder hurdles before they they reach the winning post. Um, what price are you that they will overcome Everton here? Uh, they're even money. <coughs> Go on, give us Everton the draw. It's all right. Okay, so uh, Everton are thirteen to five, and the draw is twenty-seven to ten. And we'll stick with you, Ed. What's going to happen? Yeah, I suppose it's one of the few of uh, Chelsea's remaining games that looks difficult on pay. It, will look, it is difficult actually. Uh, Everton like have the third best. Um, home record in the league only behind Spurs and Chelsea uh, their last league defeat came in December to Liverpool in the 92nd minute um, like Chelsea looked good in the, in the I suppose in the second half against Southampton there they got the job done Look, Lukaku should be well up for this he's being strongly linked with a move back to Chelsea again um, they've won their last eight, eight home games yeah, I, I, I just I, I think Everton look a price here and I'll be back in Everton at 13-5 to five. also Lukaku first goal scorer 5-1 to one in any time 8-5 to five. he's in obviously scintillating form at the minute yeah, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it, this one? It'll set up the, the, the final game if Everton get a result. Do you think they will, James? I'd, yeah, I, th I thought Chelsea looked a, a shade short to this. I, I was edging towards the draw, actually. But, um, but yeah, as, as Ed said, I mean, Everton are on, on a terrific run. Their only league defeats, actually, since Christmas have come away at Tottenham and Liverpool. And they've, they've given a, a good account of themselves at, at home in, in all the big games. Drew, drew with uh, Tottenham and Man Manchester United. Lost, obviously, very late on to Liverpool. 
beat Arsenal 2-1. I should say they were very lucky that night. Um, uh, but and then they thumped Man City 4-0. So I, I think this is a this is a tough one for Chelsea. I, I can just see maybe maybe kind of one all. But yeah, backing the draw looks looks a bit of value. Okay. Any love for Chelsea from you, Wilco? Yeah, I think they'll win. Um, a lot of stats love for Everton. Actually, eight straight home wins. They've scored three goals in seven of those eight. And but. Um, I heard lots of reports of people who went to watch them at West Ham last week and said how terrible they were. They looked awful. Couldn't believe they were in the top six. West Ham put them to the sword, couldn't score. Um, so that's what's sort of like hedging me a little bit more towards um, the visitors. I mean, Chelsea, they look so efficient. They got the job done with great efficiency against Southampton last week. Um, yeah, even money. I think they'll, they'll get the job done. They'll win. Ed goes for Everton, uh, James goes for the draw, Wilco <laughs> goes for Chelsea. There you go. Clear uh, that up. <laughs> 4.30, what a big game this is going to be at the lane. Tottenham versus Arsenal. And someone told me Tottenham are odds on for a North London derby for the first time since probably 1951 or something like that. Is that true, Ed? That is true, Bruce. They're uh, currently 10 to 11, the draw is 12 to 5, and Arsenal are 13 to 5. 10 to 11. OK, so we've got a Tottenham fan and Arsenal fan. Arsenal fan, Milts, you go first. <laughs> I mean, you know that 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 is the uh, the, the kind of eye-catching headline, isn't it? Tottenham ten to eleven, but I, I actually think it's not a bad price. Um, you know, I mentioned how how how, uh, how Pochettino's got this terrific group of players, and and their home form is just outrageously good. Fifteen wins, two draws at at, at the lane. Arsenal uh, uh, had had a a major boost with the the cup semi-final win. I mean, their last two league games, they've, they've won them, but they've been turgid affairs at, at Middlesbrough and, and at Leicester last night. I was uh, unfortunate enough to be at that game and it was... Was it, it poor? Oh, it was rubbish. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Um, How many were in the ground at the end? Um, there weren't many there at the start. There weren't, there weren't many there at the start. <laughs> 60,048, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there were a, a fair few empty seats, but... Um, oh, uh, and, and yeah, I just think that, you know, the, the, the way Tottenham play with their, that energy and particularly in midfield, I mean, you, you mentioned Deli Alley, and I think that's where Arsenal's weakness is. It's still not not quite got the right balance, whether it's Xhaka and Ramsey or Xhaka and Coquelin or whoever. It just Xhaka's it, it, appalling, isn't he? He's it's, absolutely. <laughs> I've been I, I've been kind of trying to give him the the benefit of the oh. doubt, but um, yeah, he's he's had a he's had a difficult season. Yeah, There's, they, he sh shows flashes. You know, he hits hits these balls with the, the outside of his left foot, and you think, wow, that's that's good. But then he goes and does something stupid. Um, yeah, uh, well, well, it'll be interesting to see how he does next season. Are you going to back Tottenham? You can't go that far. Um, I, no, I couldn't do that. But but yeah, no, I, I I don't think you should be put off just by the fact that it is Tottenham and 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 they should you know they've never been or done. Okay, Wilco, what are you going to do? Sounds like he wants a firing squad, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> James tailed off there. He's got lips up, quivering. <laughs> Tottenham being odds on against Arsenal uh, uh, added to my hangover. It's, just, it's, it's, it's not a good combination. Oh, where were you last night? Or were uh, you drinking at home to uh, forget? Who's at the game? No, oh, because uh, yeah, you're at the game. Yeah, yeah, uh, how yeah. many pints do you normally have at the game then, James? Um, well, we, uh, actually, uh, myself and Henry Hardwick, another oh. podcast contributor, were, were enjoying some hospitality uh, oh, at the you? game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. No, it was, it was, uh, Henry behaved himself? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Well, They did drag, drag us all out to uh, Holloway Road for some some post-match uh, uh, beverages. Oh, poor old you. OK, yeah. Wilco, what's happening then? Tottenham or Arsenal? Leaning towards Spurs. That was a massive win at Palace because after the cup game, it would be like, oh, here we go again. Spurs are going to fade and all that. That That's just erased all that sort of thing. If you, read too, you can read too much into one game, but that has done mass, that's a massive boost for them, for their morale. It's, an, it's never a usual game. Spurs Arsenal matches, but James has highlighted that Arsenal have done little on the road. Although 11 of their last 12 away matches have been overs, um, so I probably want a little bit more than six to four that there's over three and a half goals. But um, without, I can't bring myself to back Spurs at odds on at home to Arsenal, okay. but um, six to one, Deli Alley, first goal. Big game for a big player. OK, righty ho. Uh, Ed, what do you think? First of all, before you give us your match verdict, what do you think the potential market uh, implications could be if, say, Everton snatch a last-minute winner or Chelsea grind out a 2-0 win. Will that influence the market on the on the 4.30 kickoff? Uh, I Yeah, I'd like Tottenham might shorten a small bit on the back of that, all right? But it, it'd, be, it'd be marginal enough, I'd say. It okay. wouldn't be huge, like... Because, um, like, Tottenham have to go for it no matter... Well, I suppose Arsenal have to go for it too, in a way, for top four, like, you know? So, um, yeah... 
I don't know, there's a lot to play for for both clubs. But um, yeah, I suppose despite their opposite fates in the cup last weekend, I, I actually, I, I probably agree with the, I suppose the lads kind of are tentatively saying it, but like, yeah, I think 10 to 11 on Spurs looks looks fair, like more than fair actually. Uh, I think they've just learned, they're learning, I suppose it's a young squad in fairness Spurs and I think they learned a lot from last season. I think last night's game against Palace was a game they would have drawn slash lost last season but you know they, they, they ground out the result last night albeit from a worldly from Ericsson um, like yeah Arsenal were I thought very lucky as well against uh, City last weekend and conversely you know Tottenham were very unlucky against Chelsea um, so yeah Spurs at 10-11 for me definitely like Koscielny's a doubt now as well and he would be a blow too so yeah definitely all over Spurs all over Spurs right Monday Watford versus Liverpool one of those games that uh you could never go into it with complete confidence about Liverpool. I'm very interested to see what price they are, Ed. Yeah, they're uh, they're well. The Watford are five to one. The draw is hundred to thirty, and uh, Liverpool are eight to fifteen. Oh, no, oh, thank uh, you. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> oh, oh no. Don't let that influence you. <laughs> <laughs> James, James, away you go. Um, no, I, I do share your uh, oh. incredulity at that one. I mean, I mean you know, Liverpool, they're, they're, they're so easy on the eye at times, but, you know, they, they do do look a bit soft as well. I think this, this game is um, crying out for both teams to score, but uh, Watford usually score at home. All five of their, of their home games against uh, teams in the top seven uh, have, have seen goals at both ends. They had a 4-3 defeat to Southampton as well. And, um, and both teams have scored in eight of Liverpool's last nine, which kind of underlines the, the, the style of, uh, of play and, and, and also uh, suggests that, you know, they're, they're still not, not, not a certainties to finish in the top four because they, they, they are able to... They're by no means certainties. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. by no means certainties. Do you think it'll help that they're playing last out of all these teams that are chasing the bat? You know, would you rather get the... Do you think you'd rather your team would get the points in early, sort of like Saturday lunchtime rather than Monday, student know. and stuff? I don't think it matters, does it? I mean, it's, just, it's a game of football, isn't it, ultimately? I, I, yeah, no, no, no. I think if the results go against them, it could pressure them as well. Have they got yeah. any of these guys back? Is Lalana back? I don't I don't think he is. No, I'm yeah. not sure. Oh, yeah, Riley. Mm. OK, what price is BTTS? Yes, uh, yeah, it's four to six. Four to six, OK. Yeah. Ed, what's your view on this one? Yeah, I'd agree, agree entirely with James. That's exactly what I have here. Like, there is a few rumours that Sturridge is back in trading, but sure, he'll probably be injured again by the time kickoff happens. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, Liverpool look too short to me, definitely. Like, um, they are playing a team, though, that couldn't even beat a 10-man hull. Like, they lost 2-0 to them, obviously. Um, yeah, like, as James just said, like, Watford have scored in all but two of their home fixtures and have only kept four, four clean sheets at home there this all season. So, yeah, for me, both teams to score four to six looks like a penalty kick. OK, Wilco, what do you think? Um, I've, 8 to eight to 15 is a ridiculous price. I can't be doing that. I think I'll be laying Liverpool. Um, Watford, Watford's last couple of away games were poor. I mean, they were, they were they didn't turn up at Spurs and, like um, Ed says, they couldn't beat 10-man hull. But... Um, Three straight wins at home. I know they've only beaten Sunderland, West Brom and Swansea, but, you know, that's got a little bit, given them a little bit of a push. And um, Liverpool, they don't seem to know where they're going at the minute. They're just stuttering. OK, so um, what's so, the so, um So, yeah, I'd, I'd lay Liverpool. Lay Liverpool, OK. Uh, so that will be Watford draw, double chance. Very quickly, before we go, chaps, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we've got Real Madrid versus Atletico and Monaco v Juve in the first legs of the Champions League semi-finals. Very much looking forward to that. A quick bet, one bet from either of those two games. James Milton. Um, I, I, I'm not sure of the prices, but I think Real Madrid will win that first leg. OK, Wilco? Juventus to win in Monaco. OK, and Ed? The most underrated team in Europe, back Monaco at 21 to 10. <laughs> what price have you backed them at to win this? Uh, 150s. 150. Oh. How much will you win if they win? Come on, tell us. Uh, I only had a small few quid on it, but I've got a fair few quid on Atletico as well. But oh, I was right. actually, I was actually hoping they would draw one another, and I definitely had won. Yeah, the final, I know, but, um, I know. I'm, I'm on Monaco at 66s, but, I, Mills, I, it's, but it's, it still feels a very long way away, even from <laughs> yeah. the, even from the place, man. I think it's such, you know, they, they, they've played against two teams who, who really suited them, and Juventus, I don't think will. You better start ameliorating then. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking forward to that. Well done lads, me and Wilco feeling very left out here. OK, thank you very much indeed to James, to Wilco and to Ed Quigley. Thank you for listening or watching. Back next Thursday with another football postcast. Check out Paddy's new kicker feature. If you fancy your team to run riot, add a kicker to your bet. And if your team win big, you win bigger. Paddy Power, you beauty.